can't reveal. Oh, hello, Chicago. Yeah, this is Gilderville, Indiana. What'd you say? There ain't anybody at our airport at this time of day. No, sir. Fact is, there ain't no phone there. There ain't no building there, neither. Fact is, mister, we ain't got no airport. Well, I can't help it. Don't blame me. Where do they do what? Oh. Generally speaking, they land at the ballpark, but that's two feet under snow. Who? Yeah. There's an Elmer Kane lives here, about a mile out of town. Is that the Elmer Kane? The ball player? <laughs> I'll say he's a ball player. Well, uh, I'm flying to Gentryville to get him. What? You're coming here on an airplane just to see Elmer? But uh, don't tell anyone in town I called, will you? No, sir. I won't tell him. I won't tell nobody. No, sir. Goodbye. Hello? 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 Hello, everybody. Say, listen, there's a man flying here all the way from Chicago in an airplane to get Elmer Kane. Something very mysterious about it. He don't want Elmer to know. No, he don't want him to know, so don't tell nobody. Thanks a million. I'll put it right in the Gentryville Journal. Well, I'll be diggity doggone. All right, thanks. Thanks for the news. Well, what do you know about that? Some man flying all the way down here from Chicago just to see Elmer. What? Flying all the way down here from Chicago? Flying all the way down here from Chicago? Yeah. From Chicago? Hello, Bear. Howdy, Bear. Hello, Nellie. Elmer, around? No, he isn't. He's off today. It's Washington's birthday, you know. Why? Seems as how Elmer's in a peck of trouble. Elmer in trouble? Well, I'd say he is. There's some state officer or government man coming down here in the airplane to get him. What, get Elmer? Yep. It's likely something that happened in Terry Hutt last fall. It's time to get up. It's two o'clock. Elma, do you hear me? Oh, hush. I'll start Elmer's breakfast. Who ever heard of anybody eating breakfast two o'clock in the afternoon? If I had my way, I'd let the great big lazy lummox starve to death.
stranger. Howdy, right, stranger. Howdy, howdy. Now do it. Oh, Nellie. Is uh, Elmer here? No. No? Oh, that's too bad. I was hoping to pick him up here. Is there anything I can do? I'm sorry, miss, but I've got to see Kane personally. I want to take him back with me. Well, if you don't mind, let's step in the back room. Perhaps I can help you. Why, surely. Wake up! Uh, guess I fell asleep. Nellie's on the phone. She wants to talk to you. Yes? Terrible weather we're having, ain't it? Here's Elmo, Ma. Here's Elmo now. It's Nellie, dear. Yes? What does she want? She wants to talk to you. Well, what does she want to talk to me about? She didn't say. Well, ask her. Ask her yourself. Here he is, dear. Yes? Oh. I said yes? Oh, hello, boss. Didn't recognize your voice. To see me, just got in town. Yes. What's his name? Wade. The Chicago Club. Yes. Well, what does he want? Mr. Wade came down to see you about your contract. Well, you tell him he's a wasting his time. No, I don't want to talk to him at all. Sure, I knew the Chicago Club bought me. What? Certainly, I was notified. Officially. Oh, why in the world didn't you tell me? Let me talk to him. Just a minute. Well, I didn't tell nobody. Gee, the Chicago Cubs. No, boss. I'm going to stay right here in Gentryville and drive your delivery wagon for you like I always done. You just tell that fellow Wade I don't want to talk to him at all. Here's your breakfast, Elma. I'll explain everything to you tomorrow. Got to go now. My food's here. Say, is that right? Did Chicago really buy you from Terry Hart? Yes. How's the ham, Ma? And you knew it all along, Elma? Sure I did. How's the ham, Ma? Everything's ready, Elma. Is anything the matter? Nothing's the matter with me except that I'm hungry. They really want you to join the Chicago Cubs? Yes. Well, what are you going to do? Right now, I'm going to eat this food. Imagine a crossroads apple knocker high hat in the Chicago Cubs. Hey, what kind of a chump is he, anyway? He's one of the finest young men you'll ever meet. Oh, I see. It's that way. I'm sorry. Come on, Mr. Wade. We'll go out to Elma's house and talk to him. All right, Ben. Go on. Gee, Ma, he may never get a chance like this again. Not in a thousand years. Turning down the Chicago Cubs. Do you know what that means, Ma? No. What does it mean, Elma? Don't mean a thing in the world to me, Ma. But it'll probably cost them the pennant. Where's the pancakes? Stop the pancakes, Sarah. If you go with the Chicago Cubs, you're liable to turn out to be the greatest batter in the world. Liable to turn out to be? Say, where do you get that? Well, then, all right, you are the greatest batter in the world. Didn't I always say you were? Yes. But I had to explain it to you first. Any more potatoes, Ma? I think so, dear. I'll see. Now leave him alone and let him eat his breakfast. Yeah. You let me alone and let me eat my breakfast. I'm only talking for your own good. Me, I'm, I'm just so excited I won't be able to sleep tonight. Well, I will. I think I'll take another little nap before supper, too. For a chance like this, there's a million guys that give their right arms. That's the way I like ham cooked. How can you talk about ham at a time like this? What time is it? Here's the pancakes. 
Sarah will be along with some more in a minute. Put him right down there, Ma. I'll dive right into him. Sit down, Ma, and let's talk to this fella. Why, he's got the chance of a lifetime, a chance to be rich and famous. Is this so, Elma? <laughs> Let him rave, Ma. Let him rave. This is liable to turn out to be the most important day of his life. Why? Because it's Washington's birthday? Ha, 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 ha. That's a corker, Ma. Where's the syrup? Oh, heavens, I forgot the syrup. Would you like a piece of apple pie, too? Yes, bring it in. I'll flirt with it. Why don't you want to go to Chicago? Why? Because I hate places I ain't never seen. Oh, Elma, you're crazy. Is he still annoying you, Elma? Yes, he is. Did you fetch the syrup? Yes, and some more cakes. Sarah's cutting the pie. It's a fresh one. Say, Ma, can't we make him talk sense just for once? You go away from the table, Nick, and leave your brother alone. Ma, ah, he's just bullheaded. That's all he is. That's quite enough out of you, Mr. Kane. Gee, I wish I could bet like him. Yes. So does Babe Ruth. Ah, if you were only as good as you think you are. Say, I'm better than I think I am. Yeah, well, you're not as good as Babe Ruth. Who's Babe Ruth? There you are. That's how good Babe Ruth is. Have a piece of gingerbread, Nick. No, I don't want any. I'm too darn excited to eat. Go ahead, take a chunk. Ain't nobody stopping you. Can you imagine Ma of Elma even getting to know Babe Ruth? Who on earth is this Babe Ruth? Why, he's the greatest home run hitter in the world, the great Bambino, the king of SWAT. Why, he's the greatest ball player that ever lived. Is he, Elma? Well, I ain't saying a word, Ma. Here's your pie. Want some donuts? No, I don't think I... Of course I want some donuts. I wouldn't eat donuts on top of pie if I were you, Elmer. Why not? A plate of donuts won't hurt him. Give him strength. <laughs> and Sarah, bring some jam along with them. All right. Suppose that the Chicago Cubs insist that you play with them. Say, I'll play with the Chicago Cubs or any other team any time they want to come here to Gentryville. Elma, I don't get you. Neither does the Chicago Cubs. Here's your jam. No, I don't think I care for any more now, Sarah. I think if I had any more now, it would spoil my supper. Oh. Alma, will you listen to me for five minutes, huh? Oh, that's fine. Now, listen. It's Nellie. She's got a strange man with her. Yes. If it's that fellow Wade, you tell him I ain't the home. Where are you going? I'm going upstairs, and I don't want to talk to nobody. I got more reasons. What's the matter with Elmer? I'm going up and talk to him. He can't get away with that kind of stuff. Hello, Mrs. Kane. Is it terrible weather we're having? Mrs. Kane, this is Mr. Wade of the Chicago Cubs. Pleased to meet you. Mrs. Kane, this is an honor. A great honor, indeed. What a proud mother you must be to realize that you brought into the world a boy who will turn out to be one of the greatest ball players in America. Sounds kind of good, doesn't it? Yes, but the trouble is that Elmer don't seem to be interested. Not interested? It's all so confusing to me. Mama, Elmer wants to see you. Excuse me, I must run up and talk to him. I'm not interested. Mr. Wade, this is Elmer's brother, Nick. Well, how are you, Sonny? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Wade? Gee, I'm, I'm sorry about Elmer. He won't see you at all. Say, what's the matter with him, anyway? I don't know. I don't understand him. He'll surely listen to his mother. Ah, uh, not a chance. He twists more around his little finger. <laughs> well... It looks like cold turkey and no dice to me. Well, there's no use of my sticking around here any longer. The fellow won't even see me. Mr. Wade, please don't leave town until I say the word. I may be able to manage this. Will you let me take that contract you mentioned? Oh, Kane's contract. Yes, you bet. And say, listen. 
If you can get his moniker on that, I'll buy you the finest... No, you needn't buy me anything. I'm more anxious about this thing than you are. Run along and give me a chance at him alone. I think I have an idea. That's swell. Thanks. So long, kid. Goodbye, Mr. Wayne. Sometimes I wish I'd never been born. Never even seen a baseball. Take me to town. Yes, sir. Get out. It's about time that fella took a hint. He's going. You must go down and talk to Nellie. Oh, all right, Mom. I'm going to give her a piece of my mind, bringing fellas like that around here. If Elmo would only listen to me. There he is now. You talk to him. Hello, boss. Hello, Elmer. Come here, I want to talk to you. I wish I hadn't brought that fellow Wade out here. I told you over the telephone just how I felt about the whole thing. And why do you feel that way? Oh, I got more reasons. Is it because you're afraid to go to Chicago? Afraid to go to Chicago? Say, I wasn't afraid to go to Terre Haute. No, I mean because it's the big league. Is that what scares you? Scares me? Say, listen, I'll take all the pitchers on all 16 clubs in both leagues and make them look as though they never had a ball in their hand. Is that what that fellow Wade thinks? That I'm scared? Well, he's got to think something. Yeah. Well, if he said it to me, I'd suck him on the chin. Elma, did you get into any trouble in Terre Haute? Who, I? I should say I didn't. I won every game for him. Won it myself. Chicago paid $10,000 for you. Did you know that? I didn't get none of it. Oh, that's the reason you won't go. I wouldn't go if they paid a million. But you can't play anywhere else. You belong to Chicago. No, no, I don't. I belong right here in Gentryville. That's where I belong. Look at this. What is it? A contract, all ready for you to sign. Yes. Well, I ain't ready to sign it. Then you're out of baseball if you know anything about the game. I ain't going to sign it. Well, you know, this doesn't mean anything to me. The only reason I'm interested is because of your mother. I think you owe it to her. You don't think I'm getting paid to do this, I hope. No, boss. I know better than that. Tell me what's the reason for you acting this way. Nobody can understand it. Why do you want to stay in a one-horse town like this when you've got a chance to get out and be somebody? There's no future for you here. What is it? What is it? Why don't you tell somebody? Look at that. I never thought I'd get up courage enough to show it to you. That's the first time anyone's ever seen that outside of myself. I snitched it out of your ma's album and cut it down to fit. That's three years ago, and it's been in that watch ever since. What do you mean, Elma? Gee, boss, don't you know what I mean? No. I'm miserable. I go around in a daze all the time. I dream about you when I go to sleep at night. Even when I'm eating, I think about you. And sometimes when I'm driving a delivery wagon during the day, I make believe you're sitting on the seat beside me, and I talk to you just like you was there. No matter what I do, I can't get my mind off you. Sometimes I think I'm going crazy. I know I got a lot of crust to even have such thoughts. But this has been going on for years and getting worse every day. I'm sorry, boss. Please forgive me. Do you mind if I keep this in here? 
don't suppose... I don't suppose I've got a chance in the world, have I? I mean, with you. I'm sorry, Alma. You ain't gonna hate me, are you? No. You don't know how sorry I am, Alma. Oh, yes, I do. I ain't no darn fool altogether. I don't think you ought to come to the store anymore, Elma. No? No. I guess you're right. I'm sure I am. Will you tell your mother that I'll see her during the week? I must go along now. I've got a lot to do. Goodbye. Catch Nellie. Give her this. Oh, you mean you've signed? You're going? Yes. Are you satisfied now? Oh, boy. Hooray! Ma, Elmer's going. He's signed. And Nellie! So, Nellie convinced you, did she? I'll say she did. Nellie! Elmer signed the contract and everything. Oh, boy, oh, boy. The Chicago Cubs. Oh, is that great, huh? Thanks, Nick. Oh, that's all right. Well, goodbye. He finally listened to me. Ha! Huh? What's the matter, son? What's happened, Elma? Oh, nothing. I'll be okay in a minute. Must be something I ate up against. He must be dead or something. Oh, yeah. yeah, from the neck up. He's all worn out. I had him looking around for the key of the preacher's box for over an hour. <laughs> Nature in the raw. And the gall of that yet. The way he went strutting and freewheeling around that lobby. Hey, maybe we ought to rub some arnicky on his head. You know, he's got a big swelling there. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's give him a big hooray with a nightmare dummy. Hey, that's a good idea. Oh, boy, yeah. this ought to be good. One dummy against the other. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> who done that? Come on, you fellas, get back on the field there. Get out the clouding, King. You know we're here for training. Oh, I don't need no training. Oh, I know that, Elmer. But Captain Sutton wants you to show the boys how you stand up and swing when you slam out those famous home runs of yours. Oh, what's hitting you want? Yeah. Well, why didn't you say so? Hey, you fellas are in the way here. Get back there. Okay, Elmer. I want to hit her.
Well, if it ain't my old roomy high hips. Hiya, high. Hi, Elmer. Hey, look where you're throwing. You know, Wade is sure this fella Kane is another Babe Ruth. Yes, I know. We had five Babe Ruths here at this training camp at this time last year. Hey, McSweeney, let's see some of your stuff. <laughs> Try to keep him in the park, will you, fella? Isn't he the new paint job? Fresh and all wet. A typical rookie. They're kind of low in this league, high, ain't they? First day out. <laughs> Feeling pretty good in all that. Shucks, that one hit the fence. I'll put the next one over. But I'm always afraid of breaking windows. Imagine freshman in the Bush League and hitting off the three best pitchers in America without half trying. Say, who is them pitchers out there that I'm knocking around? They're not pitchers. They're a couple of second baseman rookies. Rookies? Sure. We're all rookies out here today. The regulars don't start training till Saturday. Rookies? Well, I'm no rookie. I didn't come out here to play with a lot of dumb rookies. Hey, where are you going? I'm going out to look up a timetable. <laughs> now I'm twice as mad. <laughs> Now, get a load of this and let it soak through that ivory. You're gonna lay off this guy, Kane, and I don't mean maybe. I told you fellas to soft pedal on that kidding. I know he's a fathead, but lay off. And I don't want any of you to hurt his feelings. We can't afford to lose him. And get this, I'm gonna nurse this guy and keep him if I have to fire the whole outfit and build a new team around him. Well, I think I can speak for the boys, Mr. Walker. You know, Kane's attitude was all wrong from the start. Well, gee, you'd think we were a bunch of rookies, that line he hands us, and you can't tell him nothing. He acts as if he wrote the game. And for a guy that's just breaking in, he's the freshest egg I ever met. He hasn't got the sense of humor of a guinea pig. But an appetite like a bowl constrictor. <laughs> <laughs> Since he found out they serve meals in the room, he has one breakfast upstairs, then goes down and has another one. <laughs> no, no, fellas. He's only sassy and ignorant. You can't blame a guy because he ain't had no education. He's just misfortunate. Let's give him a loving cup. Never mind the sarcasm. I mean it. If we're going to humor the sacred cow, let's go at it right. Now, that's not a bad idea, Mr. Walker. Maybe if we keep on telling him how good he is, well, he'll stop telling us. Anything that'll keep him happy is okay by me. Kane's quitting. <laughs> He's all packed and everything, and I had to talk awful fast to stop him, too. So I told him we had a great big surprise for him. He's on the way down here now. Yeah, but what's the big surprise? Yeah. I got it. Elmer's nuts to talk over the radio. And Johnny Abbott and I framed a swell gag. Oh, he'll love this. Come on, Johnny. Here he is now. Wait a minute. We better not be in here. No. Get ready for him now. Hi, fellas. Hello, Mr. Hello. 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 I said Mr. Wade was in here. Greetings, Miss Corey. Gee, you've just arrived in time to catch a great egg. Yeah, just relax and take a seat on the aisle. You're about to meet a real old-time, all-American, dumb cluck and saparoo. Will you get a load of this guy? Come on, let's get it ready. <laughs> Who is he? You'll find out. Shh. Who's there? Mr. King. Oh, hello, Elmer. Come right in, Elmer. Hello, Elmer. Where's Wade? Said you had a big surprise for me. Well, first of all, we want you to meet Miss Evelyn Corey of Baltimore and Ohio. Miss Corey, this is Elmer Kane himself. 
Elmer the Great in the flesh. The greatest hitter in the country. Yes, or in the city either. Well, well, this certainly is an overwhelming honor. And I'm very glad to meet you, Mr. Kane. Hi. What's the big surprise you said there was? Well, Elmer, the gang has all voted that you're to play in all the big important games of the season. And Manager Walker has agreed. Come on, boys, let's give Elmer Kane three cheers. Hooray! 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 There now, what do you think of that? What do you mean, what do I think of it? Well, you didn't expect to play in all the games, did you, Elmer? You want to win them, don't you? Well, what's the big surprise you said there was? Well, ain't meeting Miss Corey a surprise? For what reason? I'm afraid Elmer don't understand who Miss Corey is. No, I guess he don't. Come on, fellas. Three cheers for Miss Corey. Hooray! 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 What are you, a female batter? <laughs> no, no. Miss Corey's a very famous person. Why, she's field scout for the International Broadcast Association of the World. You mean, you mean she wants me to talk over the radio? Oh, yes. It'll be a great ad for the Cubs. All ready for the broadcast, Miss Corey. Come on, boys. Let's give our pal Elmer a big hand. Come on, Elmer. Go there you are. Step right up and tell them all about it. You'll be on the air in just a minute now, Elmer. Yeah. Is this what they call the microphony? That's it. What do you do? Just talk right smack dab into it? If you please. Yes, but you got to talk awfully loud. Yeah, if you want to reach South America. All right, Miss Corey, we're on the air. Now, quiet, everybody, please. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen of Radio Land? It is my pleasure to introduce to you one of the greatest figures the national game of baseball has ever known, Mr. Elmer Kane. Hooray! 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 Hello, Ma. This is Elmer. How's the pancakes? And how is a certain party? You know who I mean. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I was just saying a few kind words to my mother. Always remember, a boy's best friend is his mother. For when she's gone, you'll never have another. Yours for clean sport, L. Kane. <laughs> now you can clap if you want to. Gosh, it's about time for lunch. Well, thanks for letting me talk to my mother. If Elmer ever saw this, he'd take the first train home. It sure was lucky when we decided to hold up his mail. You said it, boss. Oh, I'll give him all of her letters at the end of the season. It's a dirty trick, but it's got to be done. Come in yet. Mr. Kane and the ball team should be here any minute now. Do you care to leave a message? No, thanks. You can give me a room and send my bag up. I'll wait here. I'm an old friend. I want to surprise him. Well, Mr. Kane is certainly well known around here. Front.
Oh, Elma, you were marvelous today. Simply divine. How'd you like that last home run I hit with two men on the base? It was too cute for words. And here's the payoff. A kiss for every home run. Oh, hey. Don't I get nothing for the three-bagger? Sure you do. <laughs> I'll see you later. Boss. Say, boss. Hello, boss. Look, it's Elmer. What on earth's the matter with you, boss? Gosh, I'm the one that ought to be mad, good and mad. Making a fool out of myself, writing to you every day and everything. Oh, I don't have to be hit by a brick wall to take a hint, I don't. There are plenty of other girls in the world outside of Gentryville. So I noticed. I'm sorry I ever saw you again. But wait, boss. You were at the library again. Yeah, I know. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure, sure. Ah, good night. My wife and Hohokus. What? My wife in Hohokus, New Jersey. I'm going to get drunk. And boy, do I need it. You need it. I'll get drunk with you. I don't care what happens to me now. No fooling? Look, here's a swell joint. Free booze, free eats, free everything. What's your pleasure, gentlemen? I'll have a raspberry soda pop a la mode. Sounds good. I'll take one of them, too. Hey, you fellas better watch your step. I want to get delirious tremens right away. I was a fool. Hmm, play, that's not bad. Oh. Made an error, I guess. That's the first one this season. Guess who's drinking at the bar? Don't tell me it's Mahatma Gandhi. Better than that. The guy that's got the World Series right in his hip pocket. Elmer Cade? None other. And he's broke training. Might as well look the place over. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Well, let's play some game. Here's a good one. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Give me a stack of white. Yes, sir. Stack of white, Mr. Healy. I played this game once with a circus. <laughs> Almost won, too. All set, gentlemen. Wait a minute. I'll play with you. <laughs> Pardon me, sir. We never play with money here. No? No. <laughs> How long has this been going on? All right. Give me a couple of stacks of blues, then. Certainly. Two stacks of blues, Mr. Kane. <laughs> yes, sir. And leave them right on number six. On number six? All set. All down. Here we go for a ride. Two aces and the lovely deuce. I lose, huh? Yes, I sir. win. <laughs> That's good. Give me some of them yellow ones. A stack of yellow? Yes, yeah, sir. and give me a stack of the pinks, too. A stack of pinks? Why, certainly. Yeah, them's pretty. Yeah. All ready? All set? Yep. All down? Right on six. Over we go. There we are. A two, a three, and a five. I lose again. I win again. Gosh, if that wasn't a good one. Hey, give me some more of them. Yes, sir. Just, just mix them up. Get yeah, all no. kinds of color. Stacks loose, Mr. Kane. And leave them right on number six. On six. Are you all down? 
All ready? Here we go for a ride. Here we go for another ride. A two, three, and a pretty five. <laughs> I lose again. I win again. I've been playing for 20 minutes and I ain't won once. <laughs> that is a coincidence. <laughs> well, come on, give me some more chips. <laughs> Can't play without chips. I think I'll have blues and pinks this time. All right, pink and a blue. Yes, sir. Put them right on right. six. Here we go for another ride. Yes. Giddy up. Whoa. A one, two, and a three. <laughs> I'll lose again. Win again. Did you win again? Well, three? Surely. Put it right down there. Hey, that looks pretty good. <laughs> well, give us some more chips. A one, two, and a four. Everybody loses. This is like playing with matches, only there ain't no chance of getting burned. Kind of. I'm quitting. Yeah, we better be getting back, Hoy. It's getting late. There you are, Mr. Healy. $350, right? Plenty right. Come on, Hoy. Let's get going. What's your flight? Yes, sir. Give me a stack. Surely. Just a minute. Pardon me. Let's go and get a cup of coffee. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Kane. Your cab. No, I don't think we need a cab. We just live around the corner. Now, you don't understand. You owe exactly 5,000. 5,000 what? 5,000 dollars. So if I didn't think you was Josh and I'd smack you on the snoot. Well, that's all right, Mr. Pickett. I'll let Mr. Stillman take care of this. Can you step this way? Please. But I tell you, I thought we was only playing for fun. Well, that doesn't sound like the great Al McCain. That's childish prattle. Of course you knew. Your pal here knew he was playing for money. He won $350 and got paid. That's right, Elmer. We were playing for keeps. Now, let's be sensible. We'll make it easy for you. Just sign this credit slip and everything will be okay. That's simple, isn't it? Go ahead, sign it. It's just one of them you owe me's. Come on, just to keep the record straight. You mean this will fix up everything okay? Exactly. Well, now that Mr. Kane has shown himself to be a real sport, why not reciprocate? Let's tear up that debt of $5,000 and forget all about it. Well, that's up to Mr. Kane. Listen, I'm going to talk plain. And you can take it or leave it. You're sunk for 5000 bucks, and you're going to have a tough time paying it. But we're in a position to make a cleanup. And that 5000 is chicken feed to us. Say, what are you driving at? I'm plain spoken, Mr. Kane. Here it is in a nutshell. We'll tear up that slip and give you $5,000 cash right now on the line and cut you in for a percentage of all we win betting on a series. Now, what do you say? You mean you're betting on the Cubs to win? You understand. You weren't born yesterday. We're betting on the Cubs to lose. Don't crack about our real names or we'll be out of baseball for life. Strangers in town, eh? You did very well for yourselves. Yeah. You should see them other fellows. Say, do you want this put away with the rest of your valuables? Nope. I'll eat it here. Oh! Oh, Doc, that's sore there. I'll soon fix that. Take off your shirt. <clears throat> oh, you, you broadcast over the radio here? I mean, this thing. No, this is a thermal light. Gives intensive heat, which promotes circulation. Is good for stiffness. Wait, wait a minute, Doc.
Would you step out of the room a minute? I want to talk to my pal on the QT. All right. But don't be long. This is Elmer Keene speaking. When I talked on the radio before, I said I was going to win the World Series. Well, I won't. I'm through. I'd die first before I played in it now. Let them smart Alex and wise guys win the World Series by themselves. Which they can't. The fresh stiffs. Yes. And you was in on it, too. World's news for today. The most important flash is the mysterious disappearance of El McCain, the new king of home run hitters and walloping hope of the Chicago Cubs. Kane has been missing since night before last, and sports lovers of the entire nation are deeply concerned for his safety. Kane's disappearance comes at a dramatic hour, for the Cubs and Yanks are playing the deciding game today for the world's championship, and Kane is the Cubs' mainstay as a miracle hitter and run getter. Any trace of Kane? Not an inkling, and we're sunk. I've scoured the city. The hospitals, speakeasies, yes, even the morgue. Well, did you try looking in all the restaurants? That's not funny, Noonan. Well, I don't know what we're going to do. Excuse me, but I had to come. Look, today is the last game, and Elmer swears he won't leave that jail for anything or anybody. Jail? Is Elmer in jail? I just got out an hour ago. I paid his fine. Even then he wouldn't leave. He's sore at everybody and as stubborn as a mule. What on earth happened? I've been nearly crazy trying to find him, and so has everybody else. It's all my fault. I took him down the street to a gambling house. He thought he was playing for fun and lost. You can imagine the rest. Well, what are we going to do? That's what I want to know. What are we going to do? We want to see Mr. Gump. I can't see Mr. Gump. He refuses to see anybody. What is this? We want to see Elmer Kane. Gump is the jail name he took. I'm Dave Walker, manager of the Cubs. You see, Mr. Gump is Elmer Kane. That's not Kane, the ball player, is it? Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. And we want to get him out of here right now. Well, I should say so. Here, boys, take care of these gentlemen. All right, good boy. Can you imagine that Gump being Kane, the ball player? Hey, Kane. Kane! Come on, come on, snap out of it. Say, get out of here. I'm through with you fellows. Now, don't get excited, Elmer. We just found out you were here. Hmm. And were we tickled? Yeah. I suppose you want me to come out and speak over the radio. Get out of here before I take a sock at you. Are you coming with us or not? No, and nothing or nobody will make me. Please, Elmer. No. I'm going to stay right here and let you lose the world serious. Open this door. We'll get him out of here. You're coming with us. Come on, fellas. That's so, huh? Oh, come on. I'm going to stay come right on. here. Elmer, why don't you be Never mind that. I don't want to. Let me stay in this jail. No, no, no. Let me. Oh, come on. Elmer, why don't you stay right here? Elmer, what the hell? Listen, Elmer, you're going to stay in this jail. Let me stay in this jail. No, no, no. Let me alone. Yeah, you're kidding me all the time. You're a spell guy. Come on. Let me alone. Let me alone. Hey, jailer! Jailer! Lock this door or I'll be in here for murder! Is he fighting to stay in jail or is our conscience? There you are. Thank you. A man's got some rights in a free country. Before I sign this check, I want to be sure that I understand. I give you my personal check. You turn over Mr. Kane's IOU to him. And you positively promise there'll be no scandal. Exactly. A 
And now let's go and deliver the IOU to Mr. Kane in person. Wait for me. I'll bring Mr. Kane right up. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Go away. I wanted to return your IOU. Your girlfriend from Indiana paid off your account. What's that? Hey, hey, open this up. Open up this here jail. Come in here. Don't lock this door. She oughtn't have done that. Probably all the money she's got in the world. Maybe more. Oh, now don't worry. Even if you could play today, you're in bad with everybody. You're all washed up. Why not get smart, Kane? I'll pay you the $5,000, like I said, then you can pay your sweetheart back. I'll take it. Everybody's been making a fool out of me. Everybody. I might as well be getting paid for being a fool. Now you're talking sense. I'll just sign this. I'll sign anything. Understand, if you should change your mind and show up at the ball field, it'll be just too bad. Don't fret. I'll not show up. Pay you back. Fine time to be doing that. After all I suffered. Gee, gosh, I feel miserable. They can fool some of the people part time, but the worm will turn. I'll show everybody. Of course you will. But you're going to listen to me first. But boss, you never wrote. Not even on my birthday. But I did write. Wait till Mr. Wade tells you about that. What's that? Well, I had to keep on pretending I didn't like you, so you'd stay away from Gentryville and me. Mr. Wade wrote and begged me to do it. That's the craziest thing I ever heard. I know why you didn't write and everything, but I fooled you right back. I didn't come back to Gentryville, did I? No, oh, Elmer, you're wonderful. Everybody knows that. Want this door locked, Mr. King? No, we'll be going right out.
Blow the Cubs out of first base. Noonan, left field. Kane, second base. Kane? Dirty double crosser. Don't worry. Kane won't play. This is almost unbelievable. But it explains everything. Kane is through. Can you pardon me, dear? Certainly. I sure am glad to get that cane back in there. Walker, can... take Kane out. I don't ask why, just take him out now. But, Colonel, we do as I say. I'll explain after the game. You're not playing, Kane. What? Correction in the Cubs lineup. Mooney playing second base in place of Elmer Kane. out. Out of the World Series. It's all a mystery. A big mystery to us boys up here. Pretty tough for a butcher like Kane to slug his way to the top in one season and then flop at the big moment. Listen to this mad, frenzied crowd yelling for Kane. <laughs> Two outs, and they need two runs to win. There's a man on first and noon and up. Oh boy, how they could use Elmer Kane right now. Gee, Dave, please let me bet. I'll knock that old apple out of the yard and sew up this ball game. Suck. Can't you talk to him? Won't do any good. Can't we put Kane in now? No. I can't believe it. But they're gamblers. They got a fortune bet. Let's take a chance. I can yank Kane if he even looks like he's trying to lose. What do you say, Colonel? Okay. The first move he makes that looks suspicious, yank him out. Yes, sir. Good boy. Get in there and suck it. <laughs> Watch me, Dave. Hold us, babe. <laughs> Putting Kane back in. Elmer Kane! Fighting for Mooney! Kane. Kane is coming to bat. The Cubs have a man on second and another on third. A two-bagger would score two runs. But one of those beautiful Elmer Kane home runs would put the game on ice. There are two outs and Kane at bat. Hold everything. Well, if it isn't Elmer the Great, had your breakfast? Now you take care of the catching. I'll take care of the hitting. Look out! Ah! The 
Feel all right? Yeah, I'm all right, Steve. I'll be He's all right. He's all right. What a pity. Kane got hit by a pitched ball. Hit right on the noodle. And that walks him to first base. The Cubs now have three men on base. Two out and Monaghan coming up. And by the way, folks, it looks a little like rain. I'm sure you're wrong, Colonel. He was half out on his feet from the ball that hit him. It's the first half of the ninth. The Yanks have two men on base and two out. The score is one to nothing in favor of the Yanks. And it's starting to rain, folks. That old control, boy. Come on, let's see it. Is this a game, I ask you? These Yanks are dynamite. Bolton beat out an infield hit, and the Yanks now have three men on base. There are two down, and a double means two runs. But if this rain keeps up, the umpire may call the game any minute. Never mind that, Ray. Never mind that, boy. Come on, only three men on the bases now. Don't worry about them. I got it! I got it! Come on! Come on! Cain, the miracle man, has jazzed up the game completely. And the Cubs must make four runs this inning, or zip goes the World Series. I'm sorry, Dave. I just couldn't find Get it. Get away, you sell out, and take out that uniform. Mr. Go on, scram. The Yanks haven't won this game yet. These fighting Cubs are on a rampage. It's the last time at bat and they've got two men on base and noon enough. It's still a horse race and anything might happen. <laughs> Please let me bat, Dave. I'll break that pitcher's heart. Get away, you cheap double crosser, before I knock your block off. Oh, you've got to let me hit. You've just got to. It's a bomb move. I'm safe. They're all safe. Three men on the bases. Now you've got to let me hit, Dave. You've got to listen to me. You've just got to listen. If you don't, I'll lose my $5,000. She'll lose her money. i just got to win this ball game. But the rating. You've got your $5,000 from them dirty gamblers. Sure I got it, but I ain't got it now. I bet on the Cubs to win. You what? Sure. I got three to one on the Cubs to win. The hotel manager bet it for me just before the ball game. So you double crossed the gamblers, eh? Well, say, a fellow like I that's smart enough to outsmart a lot of smart pitchers all season ought to be able to outsmart a couple of cheap tin horn crooks. Get out there and warm up. Warm up? Hell, I ain't been cool since February. Where's my bed? Come on. 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 Come on.
You pretend you're pitching it, and I'll pretend I'm catching it. Nobody can see a fastball in this dim light. on him, Elmer Kane deliberately stepped in front of the plate, evidently wanting to get hit again and get a pass to first. But he wasn't hit. The umpire is trying to make a decision. The umpire calls it two strikes and three balls on Kane. The next ball pitched will likely make history. The pitcher is now getting ready to wind up. What will the answer be? <laughs> sweetheart. Howdy, radio and baseball fans. Now that the World Series is over and I won the pennant for the Cubs, I want to let you in on a little secret. Wasn't no surprise to me. I knew how it was going to turn out all the time. Trouble is, a bashful fellow like I has got to make it look difficult. Otherwise, people don't believe you. I could go on for hours talking about myself and how I done it, but I always say that a feller shouldn't brag about himself. I always make it a rule never to take no credit. And in closing, I want to tell you followers of the Chicago Cubs that you don't have to worry about the pennant again next year, as your old friend Elmer Kane will be out there on the field in a Cub uniform. <laughs> so long, everybody. And say, don't forget to get my life story, which starts running serially in all the newspapers next week. Oh, yeah, before I forget, Hello, Ma. Tell Sarah to start cooking. Me and Nellie are on our way. Well, 
Ain't you gonna give me a kiss?